haven't been making videos as often as I would like to be. Specifically ASMR videos. And there's a couple reasons for that. Part of it has to do with gear that was stolen last year. That's somewhat integral to the recording process. Some of it has to do with financial standing. I've had to uh, clear out my extra room, my recording room, to make it as a bedroom so that I could get another roommate to help with the rent. And another big part of it has just been my general health. And I've been having some health issues lately. Within the past couple months, I've been seeing doctors and specialists, getting tests and exams and physicals done, MRIs, x-rays. And recently, I've been diagnosed with something called Meniere's disease. I'm sure most of you don't know what Meniere's disease is. It's not very common. It's even less common for someone my age, at the age of 28, to be diagnosed with Meniere's disease. So what is Meniere's disease exactly? Meniere's disease is a disease of an, the inner ear. In this case, my right ear. And Meniere's disease can cause symptoms such as vertigo and motion sickness. It causes tinnitus and hearing loss. It also can cause head pressure, head muscle constrictions, and fullness in the inner ear. The exact cause of Meniere's disease is not known. And there are some treatments for it, but there is no cure. And Meniere's disease is lifelong. I uh, first came about it about seven years ago, if I'm giving the full timeline here, is likely when it started, when I started having symptoms of tinnitus. And uh, I went to go see an audiologist, and they told me that the hearing in my left ear was almost perfectly fine, but the hearing in my right ear had some permanent damage and looked like it was hearing things noticeably worse than the other. But at the time, I didn't really notice very much. Fast forward to about three years ago, and it's when I started noticing that these symptoms were getting worse. The motion sickness was getting worse. It was harder for me to do really anything. My motion sickness in general was worse in the car, on boats, when I'm just turning my head quickly. Any sudden movements of my head or my eyes. And that's also when the tinnitus also got worse to the point where it was just a ongoing, omnipresent, permanent thing that I hear all the time. This was also around the time when I started to notice that my hearing in my right ear was starting to get worse to a noticeable difference. I started being able to hear less high end in my right ear versus my left ear. At 
the time, this didn't really seem like it had that much of a burden on my life. And fast forward another year and a half, I went back to see the audiologist. And they told me that my left ear still looked pretty normal. But my right ear, however, was again getting worse. And by the the scale of how it looked at that audiogram versus my previous audiogram, it looked like it was going to continue to get worse. So around that time, all these little symptoms were getting slightly worse. And then within the last couple months, things started to change and get even worse. Over the course of maybe two months, the motion sickness was getting worse. The tinnitus was becoming a real problem. It's been making it difficult for me to sleep, even with white noise present. The hearing loss again, I could tell was getting worse. And on top of all these symptoms, this is when I first started feeling this constant head pressure, particularly on the right side of my head, and particularly around my ear. My ear now constantly feels like it's plugged up, like it's full. It's kind of similar to the feeling of getting off an airplane and feeling like your ears are about to pop, but they just won't pop. And that's kind of how my right ear feels all the time. And it just has all this pressure and hypertension that I feel as if the muscles are constricting and I can't unconstrict them. around the time where I insisted that I needed to see a doctor about this, I started to have these little twitches and spasms that would happen on the right side of my head, right above my right ear. And sometimes they'd happen and they just would repeatedly happen on and off for several hours or several days. And sometimes they go away, but they almost always come back. The doctors are not positive that the Meniere's disease is responsible for these twitches and spasms, but they certainly could be related. It's possible that it's just related to stress. The stress is causing these spasms, and they just happen to coincidentally be in the spot where the Meniere's is taking place. But through these tests that I've been taking, the uh, doctors confirmed that the parts of my ear that are displaced, the semicircular canals, um... The way that it's all positioned is in line with Meniere's disease. So, it's becoming a constant problem as of lately for a number of things. And it also becomes a constant concern as to what the future is going to look like for someone like me who is completely dependent on their ears for their career and their lifestyle as a musician and a music producer. And is just somebody who constantly analyzes sound. The biggest issue personally for me now is the tinnitus because it makes it incredibly hard to sleep. 
but it also makes it difficult to record these ASMR videos because they often have to be recorded in a very silent room and being in a very silent room exposes you to the tinnitus to the point where it just kind of feels like daggers in your ears. The tinnitus has always been a problem for the last seven years, but within the last two months, really, really over the course of maybe a week, the tinnitus starts becoming noticeably worse in my right ear versus my left ear. As somebody who always sleeps on their right side, I've been trying to adjust more to sleeping on my left side because the tinnitus is not as bad when I sleep that way. As a musician, the hearing loss is going to be a big issue. It's unknown if I will actually become deaf in my right ear permanently because not always, uh, not everybody goes deaf in their ear. Meniere's disease ear. But most people do experience hearing loss. And at the predicted rate of hearing loss that I've been experiencing in the past few years, it's likely that I will be needing a hearing aid at some point in my life. And that some point could happen late 30s, 40s, 50s. It may never happen. It's kind of a wait and see. And I've just been doing a lot of waiting and seeing lately, and it's becoming pretty stressful. Dwelling in the unknown. The treatments for Meniere's disease typically involve a lot of vestibular therapy. A lot of uh, physical therapy that involves a lot of rapid head movements and positioning of your head to adjust the muscles and bones of the inner ear to realign in certain locations. I'm going to be seeing an ENT next month, and then this summer is when I start physical therapy for Meniere's disease with a specialist. There's really not a whole lot of other treatments that someone in my position can really do. As someone who travels a lot, as somebody who is exposed to loud noises and loud music a lot. You know, like any given disease, keeping your health in check is usually very helpful. Making sure your, um, your blood and your cholesterol is good will help with the symptoms of Meniere's disease. But I'm at a point where taking meclizine and often painkillers every day to help with the motion sickness and the headaches and the head pressure. Around the time that I uh, was coming to terms with the fact that this might be Meniere's disease, I was discussing it with my stepmother who told me that our grandpa, her dad, also has Meniere's disease, and he's been using a hearing aid for a long time. So I'll likely be like him one of these days. So whatever this means for my future, I'm going to think on the brighter side because these symptoms sometimes kind of come and go. Some things are omnipresent, but sometimes the 
head pressure and the vertigo are worse on some days than others. Today in particular, they weren't so bad, so I thought I would discuss this in a video. As far as the future goes, a lot of people who have Meniere's disease will eventually experience things called vertigo attacks, which is an instance of vertigo that happens pretty harshly and can happen from anywhere between five minutes to five hours to several days in some rare cases. I think so far I've only experienced minute cases of, Meniere, of uh, vertigo attacks due to Meniere's disease. I think I've experienced it a few times um, when I go to sleep because a lot of the time symptoms of vertigo with Meniere's disease are triggered by head position. So they can often happen when your head is in a non-vertical position. But so far I haven't experienced anything particularly drastic or anything that's of huge concern. But a couple years ago, as a musician, I was playing piano for dance classes as a job. And that was around the time I began to realize that the motion sickness was interfering with my ability to work because it involves a lot of constant head turning, looking at the piano, looking at the teacher, looking at the dancers, and then looking back at the piano. And you have to do it pretty suddenly when you're playing. And it just became an issue that I couldn't really fix. And those who, who know me in, in close contexts know that I've often complained about motion sickness and tinnitus. And now here's my answer as to why I've been experiencing those things. So, Meniere's is not fatal. It's not that crucial of, a, of an illness. A lot of people live solid lives with it. There's some particular famous individuals who've got it. Lots of people of all different spheres can get it. I know Huey Lewis has Meniere's disease, as does Les Paul. And in some cases, the effects of Meniere's disease lessen as time goes on. So right now in my world, it's very much about waiting and seeing. But right now, that's what it sounds like. The, uh, the issues I'm going to have to deal with for the rest of my life. So this is my video to you to let you guys know uh, what's going on with me and hopefully I won't have to make this a constant issue for those around me. Thank you for watching.